when a car is in movement and you want the spectator or the viewer to feel the punch, to feel the full throttle, then merely moving the camera along with the car might not be very effective. A little bit of extra mind needs to be added with that. So let's see what's this all about. A very normal car animation, nothing exceptional. So now we shall take a camera, pose it near to the tire for a more dynamic look, constrain to the master control of the car so that the camera can follow it. And this is what we see. Now let's go to the next level. Let's bake the keys of the camera and adjust the camera animation graph in a way that in the end, the car gains and eventually goes out of the framing. This definitely looks better and dynamic compared to the earlier one, right? So this is a very normal way to do this action. Uh, it looks pretty decent, of course, and it's good to go. But if we really want the shot to go a level up, then we can include the vibration of the car onto the camera, indirectly to the eyes of the spectator. So let's see how it can be done and what's the effect of this vibration on our weaving experience. To start with, we shall do some minimum changes of rotational values of the camera on each frame and for about 5 to 6 frames. The change will be in fractions so that the camera change can be very minimal. It should be just felt and do not become something which is more pronounced. Now let's copy these keys and start testing them till the end. Let's see. Why is the car going back and forth? I suppose it is the camera action that is causing the solution. Because we did not touch the car animation at all. We need to look into the rotation values of the camera. To start with, we need to break the repetitive pattern because it keeps on repeating after every six frames and gives us a very even motion of the camera. It's in loop. We should get rid of this loop and make things a bit more uneven. To do so, we can randomly start deleting some keys, just very randomly. No. Still, the 2 and 4 action is there. Let's see again in details. After careful observation, it is clear that it is a rotation y-axis that is giving us the feel Let's delete this graph totally. Let's see. It's gone. Now you can see a minor vibration on the camera and it feels we are also going along with the car. This is definitely more appealing than the previous one. Need a bit of more cinematic film? Let's do it. That the camera moves along with the car in the same speed up to a certain time and then the car gains out of the framing. Or rather the camera slows down to allow the car go out of the screen. Since this particular axis is Z in which the car and the camera are moving, so let's work on this. After adjusting the Z curve, you can see that in the initial stages, the gap between the end of the car and the camera framing is this much and in the end, just before the car zoops out, the gap has increased. So, this means that the car was actually gaining from the very beginning. You can see this, right? Look carefully. So, that was a bit of cinematic feel to this uh, car photo or chase, whatever it might be. You can definitely alter the rotation values of X and Z and control the vibrations as per your need. In actual production, you don't have to do all these things because these type of options like uh, the hand and feel, the camera vibration, and all these things come automated with the camera rig itself. So the main purpose of this video is to show you how the backend thing works. And suppose if you don't get it, 
in the automated camera rig for your project, then you will be in a situation to do it yourself without any problem. Now, let's change the position of the camera from outside of the car to the inside. To be more precise, let's take it to the POV of the driver. Just a bit of overall alteration of the curve from the graph editor and we are good to go. Let's take the camera to a position that matches almost to the head level of the driver. Well, this looks quite okay to go for. Now, we didn't touch the vibration axis and hence, from the POV, it looks quite jerky. As if the car is going through a very rough landscape. No problem, let's scale down the graph. This looks much better. You need more? Well, scale up the graph. And this is how we can add a little bit of more intense speed in shots like this. You can use this technique, I mean, this type of vibrations for any moving shots. For example, if it's a inside a helicopter and it's a helicopter chase sequence. So this will make it more realistic. Or for any movement, I mean, for any movement shots where you need to match the tempo of the shot and make the audience feel that he's also a part of it. You can use this type of vibrations and that adds a lot of realistic feel. So that's all for today. And if you feel that this video is of any good to you, then don't forget to give a like and subscribe to my channel Technic. So for the time being, goodbye.